Morgans here. On my way. Only one man left. Flashbang! Cover me. No. Oh. I need help. That was very nice. I think I heard something. I see our enemy. I hate these chickens. Hey Pro Guides family, I'm Dan, and today I'll be bringing you another Pro Guides video in which we're gonna be helping you with choking and panicking to make sure that you won't have to worry about losing that crucial 1VX, or once it really matters, completely missing your shots against an enemy that is standing still looking the other way and the sheer embarrassment of having your entire team watch that sequence. Additionally, we're also going to be discussing how to approach your clutch so that you can be confident whether it's 1v1, 1v2, or even you versus the entire enemy team. So before we get this guide started, it's time for our question of the day. And that is simply, what was the clutch that you're most proud of? Make sure to leave your answer in the comments. I can't wait to read these stories. So with that all out of the way, let's get into it. The single biggest difference between someone who has a lot of experience at clutching and wins them all the time and someone who, well, doesn't, is the way they feel in the clutch. Someone who hasn't been playing for a very long time might get anxious from the watching eyes of their teammates, or they might crumble under the pressure of the importance of the round. They'll get scared and might start tensing up, wondering what to do, but they never end up making the necessary plays. The truth is, unlike some people might think, the experienced players also don't know exactly where everyone is or exactly how to approach their clutch, but they have gotten used to the pressure and are able to start thinking clearly and concisely again. If you worry about how unlikely your clutch is to be won or how important the current round is, your chances of actually winning that clutch lower a lot. As it turns out, putting a lot of unnecessary pressure on yourself is not the way to go. However, if you're just calm, looking for clues on where the opponents might be, or thinking about potential plays you could make and mistakes you can exploit, your chances are suddenly a lot better. Not feeling flustered or pressured in a clutch will come natural the more hours and games you rack up. But if you don't have all day every day to spend playing, or if you'd like to speed up this process, there are a few tips in order to get this down faster. Once you're in a clutch, you have to stop thinking about things that won't help you win. Try not to think about how important the round is or how unlikely your clutch is, or about your teammates that are watching. If you start to think about how embarrassing it would be to have your teammates watch you miss that guy that wasn't even looking at you, more likely than not, you will miss that easy kill. You need to have confidence in yourself, or at least not have that idea of you choking stuck in your head. If you think you'll fail, you will definitely fail. If you think you'll succeed, you'll, depending on the situation, likely still fail, but at least there's a good chance of you actually succeeding. If you really feel a lot of pressure, you can say, you guys wanna watch Cool Clutch? Or you guys ready for one taps? This can really help lifting some pressure, and if you mess up, regardless, you can always laugh it off. And if you perhaps do actually get four one taps, well, you'll be looking even cooler. What this tip basically boils down to is that you need to get rid of unnecessary pressure and just be chill in the clutch. After all, the reason you choke is not because you lack practice, but because you felt flustered and unsure what to do. Having a good mentality towards clutching is key. You have got to realize it's impossible to win every clutch, and sometimes it's better to just save your guns and try next round instead. Let's say you're playing Mirage and the opponents rushed B and killed both defenders on sight, and you're now stuck in a 3v5 retake. It's much better to just give up this round and have a good buy in the next one. After all, if you can save three guns, you can in most cases have a good buy in the next round. But if you for whatever reason really want to or have to go for a clutch because maybe you need rounds on the board or it's last round anyway, then you better come prepared with the right mentality. When you decide to go for a clutch, always remember that it's okay if you lose because the round was already lost anyway. If it's 1v3, realistically, you should not be winning. Regardless of whose fault it was, you're in a bad spot now. The task is up to you to change the outcome of this round. So don't be scared to do something daring or take big risks. After all, you won't win a 1v3 by playing standard unless your enemies really make a lot of mistakes. If you're in a clutch, you basically have to try and find 1v1 battles, because the more 1v1s you can find, the better your chance of clutching the round becomes. You're not going to kill all three people if you peek them all at the same time, unless your opponents decide not to shoot back. So if you're in a clutch, don't ever be scared to take 1v1 fights. 1v1 fights are truly what you need in order to clutch, even if the fight is not very favorable for you, because maybe they have a better angle or a better gun, that doesn't matter. If you need to clutch, you gotta make a play. Your opponents don't have to and shouldn't push into you or even let you have a 1v1 fight. So any 1v1 fight you can get is a mistake from your opponents and a chance for you. So take every chance you can and win out that clutch. The feeling of losing a clutch sucks, especially when you feel you could have won it if only you had done that one thing. 
If you ever get in that situation where you lost your clutch, and if only you did something different and you could have won it, well, that's great. Take notes. Whether it's a mental note just in your head or physically in a Word document or even on paper, you should be feeling great because you just learned something and you just become better as a player. And of course, that's easier said than done because losing still really sucks. But what it comes down to is you win some, you learn some. Whenever you lose your clutch for whatever reason, just try your best and take something from it. Next time you're in that situation, be it that exact situation, a similar situation, or even a clutch in general, you will be a better player and you'll be more suited to win it out this time. If that time you learn something again, great. The more you keep learning and learning, the more often you'll see yourself winning. Becoming a great clutcher and winning lots of clutches takes losing even more clutches. Every time you lose, you should try to learn something, and if you do that and keep doing that, you'll improve. The more you can learn from each clutch and more mistakes you can find in your game, the faster you'll improve. So feel great after your losses, because your losses are your chances to improve, but only if you take the chance. If you're truly determined to improve and you're consistently looking at your mistakes, you'll be able to skyrocket through the ranks and you'll improve much, much faster than anyone who doesn't. Of course, losing your clutch today in this match really sucks, but if you play your cards right and take all the lessons you can from your mistakes, in your next game, you'll be a better player with more potential and a better understanding of how to clutch. A clutch, if played correctly, is generally just a series of 1v1s. You always want to try and avoid fighting multiple opponents at once because as we talked about before, you shouldn't be winning a straight up 1v3 aim fight. Therefore, time and the amount of opponents left are the biggest factors on how you should play a clutch. If there's only 40 seconds left into the round and it's 1v4, you don't have time to sneak up to a site and slowly clear all the angles, so you'll just have to take big gambles on where you think opponents might and might not be and just try and get a fight. Even if you do get the side, simply sneaking in without getting a kill or two beforehand, you're still very, very unlikely to win. Because a 1v4 after plan isn't very fun. You'll just get peaked by four people simultaneously and you'll just end up getting traded. So unless your goal is to get bomb plant for money, this is not how you want to approach your clutch. So if you do get in a situation where it's 1v4 with little time left, you basically have to rush and get a kill, hopefully two, and then plant the bomb to play the 1v2 after plan. A 1v2 is already a lot easier to win than a 1v4, but you're not there just yet. You've got to think about how you want to play your clutch. Do you want to be in a situation where you allow opponents to play together, where they get sight and one guy will be sticking the bomb with the other guy covering, or would you rather get a fight early into the after plant to play a 1v1 with bomb planted? If you have the bomb planted in a specific open position where you can spam the diffuser, even through a smoke, or maybe you know a specific Molotov for the bomb, then it's fine to let them get sight. But if that's not the case, maybe you want to aggress even more. Try and find one kill and force your opponent into an awkward 1v1 clutch with bomb ticking down. We all know how hard those can be. If you manage to win all your duels and you play it right, congratulations, you just won a seemingly impossible clutch. If not, well, unlucky, better luck next time. On the other side of the coin, if you're in a 1v2 with, let's say, a minute of time left, obviously you'll want to play this completely differently. Now you want to carefully clear out as many angles as you can, carefully gathering more and more information until you get a good idea of what you want to do. In essence, the time on the clock and the amount of opponents left should really dictate how you should play your clutch. If you don't play according to it, you'll either take risks you really don't need to take, or you'll end up in a situation that is truly unwinnable. Because even simple can't kill four people swinging them at the same time. The last and arguably the most important tip I can give you is keep track of your opponents and their tendencies. Every player has a certain play style, and most of the times, each player has his own spot and doesn't randomly switch positions. So if you're in a clutch, you can and should have a general idea of where every player can and can't be. If you've been getting instant double headshot every time you set foot on A and the enemy B anchor was always trying to play passive, hiding somewhere in sight, doing a contact play where you just try and walk into B, catching the more passive player off guard and taking sight can be a really, really good idea. Afterwards, once you get the bomb down, you can deal with the A player. This is just one example of how you can plan a clutch around your opponent's playstyle if you know your opponents prefer playing more passive or more aggressive, or if you notice some other tendencies, then you can build your clutch around it. So try and keep track of which players are playing where and what their tendencies are, so that once you get into a clutch, or even outside of a clutch, you can abuse this knowledge. If you start keeping track of all these little bits of info, immediately you'll notice that you will start to predict what opponents are going to do, or how they're going to react before it even happened. The more you practice it, the more it will become second nature. And more often than not, you'll be able to recognize patterns which will allow you to win a lot of rounds later in the half.
Well guys, that's gonna be all for now. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and make sure to subscribe. We have a lot more content in our channel to help you improve and there's so much more on the way as well. Also, if you wanna get to the next level and improve as fast as you possibly can, make sure to check out ProGuides.com. We have some amazing coaches on there that can really help you out, as well as the one and only, the original Simple Master course for CSGO. So make sure to check that out and have a good rest of your day.